Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on doing the RCA or composite mod on an Atari. In this video, I'm gonna be modding a four switch Atari 2600. The same mod will also work on the six switch version as well as the Atari 7800. And basically the reason that I'm doing this mod is because if you look at the audio video cable coming out of the Atari, there's no way to plug this into a modern display. At a minimum, you need to use one of these adapters, which is RCA to coax. I got this for about a dollar on Amazon. And this will let you plug the Atari into the antenna tuner on your television. The reason I don't want to go that route is because I run my home theater through a receiver for surround sound and the receiver doesn't have coax input. It does have RCA input. So what I'm going to be using to do this mod is this kit that I bought off of eBay. It comes with the red, yellow, and white RCA barrel plugs along with this little circuit that's all pre-assembled and ready to go. I'll just need to solder it on. You can look up the schematics and build this circuit yourself from components to save a dollar or two, but for eight bucks, I just went ahead and bought the whole kit. So the first thing that we're gonna do is flip the Atari over, and I'm gonna start by taking out these four screws that hold the two halves of the Atari together. All right, now I'm just gonna flip the Atari back over, and I'm gonna lift the top off. I can pull that whole thing out. Here's my board. So I'll separate the board from there. Now what I'm gonna do is go take this outside and blow out any remaining dust that's in here. All right, so now that we've got our board out and all dusted off, I'm gonna take this wire off um, and we can get rid of this plug because we're not gonna use that anymore. And the next step is to take off this metal shield. So there's four tabs, one, two, three, and four. And what I'm gonna do is use a pair of needle nose pliers to just turn these tabs so they'll fit through the slot. All right, then I'm just going to unhook this tape here. It looks like that one's free. Okay, and this is going to lift off in two pieces. There's this piece on the top that should lift straight off. And there's a piece on the bottom that should come off as well. Okay, so what I'd like to do next is use some 99% isopropyl alcohol and some Q-tips. And I'm just going to clean up the board, scrub everything clean. All right, now that the board is all cleaned up, the next step is to take off this old video processor. And so what I'm gonna do is use a pair of snips to cut these five pins, and I'm gonna cut them across the tops of the pins so that I can solder to them later. And then there's these four solder dots here. I'm gonna try and solder wick those. Basically, those are holding the four corners of this box to this board. All right, so now that I have this little circuit board removed, and you're gonna to wanna to take your time with that, that took me about 20 minutes to do. And basically what I did is started by solder wicking as much as I could off the bottom, and then I used a knife wedged in between it and heated up all the solder pads to basically try to get these little feet out. You can see these feet are what are actually soldered in. This one just broke off. And also notice there's some solder on the top, on the front sides here and here as well. So just take your time. Once you get this off, you can put it in your disposal pile. We're not gonna use that anymore. What we're gonna replace it with is this little circuit that came in our kit. And we can see plus five audio in, video in, and ground. These four wires are what we're gonna solder onto our board. These three outputs are gonna go to our barrel plugs. And so I've looked up online here and found the pinouts. So pin one is ground, pin three is plus five, four is video, and R206 is audio. Um, so if we look at our board here, we can see that pin one is identified by this one etched into the PCB. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Um, so we're not going to use pins two and five. So I'm just going to snip those right off to make soldering easier. Okay, and then we'll see R206 is where we need to pull our audio signal from. So if you look on the board here, you can see R209 is this resistor. So this is 209, 208, 207, 206. So basically, I'm going to solder that to the leg on this resistor here. That's where we'll get our audio signal from. So next one I'm going to do is strip back the ends of these wires and get them all tinned and ready to solder onto this board. All right, so now that my wires and my pins are all tinned, I'm going to solder black ground to pin one. We're gonna do plus five red to pin three. Video in is yellow to pin four, and audio in is blue. We're gonna do that to the resistor. So let's go ahead and solder these on. 
All right, so now that the board is all soldered up, our next step is to mount these barrel plugs. I'm gonna mount them in the bottom half of the case, just in the back in the center here. And so you're probably gonna to wanna to use a ruler to do this and line it all up nice, but I'm in a hurry and I don't have a ruler handy. So I'm just gonna use something flat, line it up where it looks about right. And then I'll just make a little mark in the center and one off to the side here, one kind of equidistant over here. And now I'll drill out those three holes that I can see. Um, and I'll start with a small bit to do a little pilot hole, and then I'll use a bit that's roughly about the same diameter as the barrel plug. We want it to be snug in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and drill out these holes. All right, so now start with the yellow one. We're going to go yellow, white, red. And I'm just going to take this nut off here. All right, so now you'll notice that the way that I've arranged these, the yellow is on the bottom here and then 90 degrees facing each other. I've got these two pieces on the white and the red facing each other. And then you'll see up top is these three. So we're gonna run a wire through these three. We're gonna wire, run a wire that bridges these two and then a third wire to this one. All right, now I'm just gonna use a razor blade to separate these ground rings, fold them out a little bit so I can get to them. All right, now I'll use needle nose pliers to kind of bend them so that I can thread a wire through them. All right, so now I'll get the board that we've soldered the chip onto and set it close by. And basically what I'm gonna do is get the black wire, which is the ground coming out of the output, and I'll measure it so that it sits across all three, and then I'll strip it about right there. Okay, then I'm gonna thread that black wire through all three of those holes. Now I'm just gonna put some solder on each of the three contact points. All right, so now we'll do the same thing again, but we'll do it with the blue wire, which is audio out, and that's gonna to go to the back end of these red and white barrel plugs. So again, I'll measure it out and then go strip the wire about right there. All right, then I'll feed them through the holes. Now I'll solder those points. All right, and then we'll do the same thing again with the yellow wire, which is the video signal. Um, so I'm just going to strip it down um, right towards the end here. Now I'll feed it through the slot, bend it over, and then solder it on. All right, so before we put this thing all back together, I've got it all plugged in. I've got the RCA plugged into an RCA capture card. Uh, so let's go ahead and kick this thing on and give it a try. And you can see here, we've got audio and video, um, but there's some pretty bad uh, video degradation. And so two things to note. One is this little round thing here. As you turn this, you can change the color scheme. So definitely go ahead and play around with that, figure out the color scheme you want. Um, the other thing to notice is when I move this crystal oscillator here, most of the time you see the image deteriorate, but occasionally I can hit an angle where it just kind of clears everything up. So I'm likely going to change this crystal oscillator out next. But before we do that, let's take a look at a different Atari that I did. Kick this one off. All right, so this is the first Atari that I modded. And I plugged this in to show you guys. When I plug it into the TV, you can see there's no artifacts. That picture is real crisp, real clean. Um, and the reason that I wanted to show you guys that is because I want you to understand that the RCA mod will give you RCA video out but it's not gonna fix any pre-existing problems with the video signal caused by other components, uh, like this crystal oscillator on our second board. All right, so now that everything's been wired up and tested, what I'm gonna do is start putting it back together and we'll just size up where it's gonna sit here. And the next step I'm gonna do is take this tape off the sticky piece here, and I'm gonna stick this little board to somewhere where it makes sense, probably about right there. Okay, now I'll kind of move these wires over around the board here and I'll put the bottom piece on so now we have our tab sticking up here out of these four pieces and now I'll put this piece on and basically I'm going to use a sharpie and I'll figure out where this is going to sit and I'm just going to make a mark about right here and now I'll go use a dremel to cut a hole in here so that we can get this blue wire through from underneath all right, now that I've got this hole cut in the side here, I'm gonna put this top piece back on. And now I'll use a pair of needle nose to fold all the tabs back over. All right, now I'll be conscious of the back wires here and set this thing in where it needs to go. All right, now I'll replace the top. 
All right, now I'll flip it over and put the four screws back in the bottom sides here, two here and two into there. All right, so at this point we have successfully added RCA cables to our Atari 2600. Hopefully at this point you guys have a resurrected Atari that's ready to go. As always, stay tuned and thanks for watching.